Okay, so what's up there guys and welcome back to Dig It Detecting. Uh, although still no uh, detecting yet, sorry guys. Uh, I'm, I'm still battling along with this gearbox. And uh, unfortunately it's uh, through no fault of my own. I paid for this gearbox uh, last Monday uh, via cash, via direct deposit uh, to this uh, business account. Basically for them to uh, hold up to their promise and uh, send out the gearbox within two days. Well, uh, we are eight days on and uh, here we are. We finally have a gearbox and uh, that is also through a lot of uh, persistent phone calls being hung up on, uh, being, uh, <laughs> look, being verbally abused and everything. Uh, he, I will never deal with this company again. Uh, it's, it's amazing, you know, you pay your money, you think you would get what you paid for uh, and what, what was promised to you. But by geez, I've had uh, one hell of a week trying to get this gearbox uh, two hours down the road to my location. It's crazy, it's crazy. I even paid for freight here, and uh, still the bloke said, uh, you just come and get it then. I said, well, no, I've paid for freight, mate. And uh, you know, due to COVID, I can't come and get it. Uh, hence why I paid for freight. And uh, uh, look, amazing, amazing. In 15 years of ordering parts, I don't think I've ever made uh, been made so angry uh, over such a simple uh, transaction, business transaction. Pay the money, get what you paid for. Uh, pretty simple stuff, I would have imagined. Anyway, that's my rant over. That's the start of this video, I'm sorry. Uh, however, that's where we're at. We've finally got the gearbox and we've got the reconditioned torque converter. So what a ripper, what a ripper. Uh, I'm, I'm sort of turned around a little bit now and uh, I'm a little bit happier. <laughs> As you can imagine, this last uh, week has been very stressful and, uh, you know, paid $1,600 for this and to be uh, being abused and hung up on uh, was not very nice. I didn't know where I stood uh, in even getting this gearbox uh, through no fault of my own. Anyway, that is what it is. We'll move on from that. And now we need to concentrate on putting uh, this new gearbox in. So, and the new torque converter. So I'm just going through uh, basically draining uh, a few items, removing a few lines that I don't need. Uh, they, this come from a wreckers and at a wreckers they generally just snip and chop and, and send it out, pack it and send it. So a lot of these lines are still attached. However, at the other end, they've been snipped and chopped and, and kinked and what have you. So what I'm doing is just going through, removing what I don't need. Uh, and we're also gonna be taking off some of the parts uh, from the other gearbox and placing onto this new one uh, some of the better parts that uh, I'd like to keep. Anyway, uh, so that's what we'll be doing and then uh, it's under the car and uh, the gearbox is going back up and <laughs> thank God, thank God too. You know, I was supposed to have uh, this last week, as I said, uh, two days since I made payment. So I should have seen this gearbox Wednesday last week. Uh, however, here we are Thursday, the following week. Um, anyway, what it's done though is, unfortunately, you know, it's stuffed up all my plans. Uh, it's my son's sixth birthday tomorrow, Dominic. He's turning six. Uh, it's also my birthday the following day. And look, I don't, I don't worry about my birthday too much. But Dominic's birthday tomorrow, I really wanted to get out and, uh, you know, enjoy it with him, do something with him, uh, take the motorbikes out, as you see here, take the four wheels out. <sighs> can't do that. I can't do that. I'm still in the process of now reinstalling uh, the new gearbox, which is a real shame. As I said, no fault of my own. That's just due to this business. And uh, I said, I won't name names because it doesn't help anybody. However, uh, they'll never be getting my money again, that's for sure. Just wanted to show you this too. Um, Oop, if it'll focus, that is the magnet that I spoke about in my last video. And I haven't touched it, I've left it here so you can all see it. And that there has been picking up all the metal filings, uh, what have you, out of my old gearbox here. So I just removed it just to show, uh, just to see myself and also show you guys. And you can even see the metallic -y. Look at that. Just on the, that's the transmission filter. So that is the uh, filter that goes inside the transmission. Look at the metal filings it's been catching. Isn't that amazing? Uh, it's definitely been doing its job, although it's not supposed to be catching metal filings. So anyway, that's enough of that. We've got to put the, uh, the filter back on, on the valve body there, and put the pan back on, and uh, that is a changeover gearbox. This one needs to be sent back. Um, so anyway, who knows, I might take two weeks to send that one back uh, like they, they did to me here. That's not going to help anything though, is it? Anyway, we are now, as I said, going to finish buttoning up a few items on this. 
we're going to shoot him under the car and uh, we are going to get lifting hopefully have this installed uh, i'll work through to midnight if i have to it's uh, what 10 o'clock now uh, in the morning so i'll work through to midnight if i have to try and get this done Okay, so something I'll just say with these torque converters here, uh, these are a major component of your automatic transmission. Uh, they're full of fluid, full of gears, and basically it's what uh, gives you drive and creates uh, the compression for drive through your transmission. So, um, look, basically what I wanted to say though is they've got a series of gears in them, and it is very important that as you uh, basically put these onto the input shaft, the torque converters, you slide them on. Uh, it's very important to spin them around, you know, back and forth and push back and make sure they go all the way home. Uh, you do not want them sitting out. They've sort of got about two or three stages, you know, you sort of push them up and you think, oh, hey, that's it. And then you sort of twist them, push them, and you'll feel them go back another inch and you think, right. And then, you know, you sort of just twist them around, make sure they're all the way home. And uh, also when you're under the car installing, do the same thing, keep pushing on it every so often, making sure that it's all the way home. Otherwise what you'll find is you might be able to do your flywheel bolts up once under the car, and then when you bring the gearbox together, you have a massive uh, gap around the bell housing where you just cannot uh, bolt it together. So anyway, uh, we're just gonna keep tidying up a few bits and pieces, taking a few uh, items off and, and putting a few items on that we need, getting it ready, and then we're going under the car to start installing, so pretty cool. Righty all, we are ready to go under the car now. As you can see, I'll put it on this green tray, this plastic tray, and it sort of helps slide under the car, uh, making that a little bit easier. I am doing all this by myself at the moment. I don't have the father-in-law here helping me at the moment. I did have the truck driver or the courier driver help me bring it in the, the uh, shed here, and uh, it was really nice of him, actually. Um, he was a really, really nice bloke, so a lot better to deal with than the bloke who sold me this gearbox anyway. Anyway, so we're going to get it under the car now, push it under and uh, make a start on getting it slung up uh, with the engine hoist and uh, basically raising it up, ready to put it in place. Righty oh, <laughs> that was an effort. We got it under the car though. Uh, just basically, I was sort of using my back shoulder to push off the wheel and uh, using my foot to push it up underneath the car. Ah, dear. Oh, well, there's a will, there's a way, and uh, I always will find a way. So I like to anyway. Anyway, as I said, we're going to sling it up now, and uh, we are going to get the engine crane in place. Uh, we've got a big cavity up here, uh, ready to pull those straps up through, and ready to lift the uh, the gearbox into place. So let's go. Okay, uh, smoko time. It's 11 o'clock. Uh, we've been going for about, oh, about an hour and 20 minutes now, and uh, wouldn't you believe it? It's already up there and it's pretty much in place, nearly, nearly. The bow housing all is meeting up. Uh, we've just got to uh, throw some bolts in it and uh, bring it just, there's a little bit more alignment that we need to do. But as you can see there, we have pretty much got it up in place. And as I said, I am doing this all by myself at the moment, uh, which is quite all right. You know, I used to do this all the time in the workshop. We, we used to do about one a week, a gearbox a week. Uh, however, as you can imagine, you had gearbox uh, hoist stands, you had uh, the car hoist, so you wouldn't be working on the ground. You'd be standing underneath it and you had everything. You had everything. So a little bit limited to what I do have here. Uh, however, do, I do have all the tools and I do have uh, the knowledge of how to get it done. So as I said, uh, we've been going for about an hour and 20 minutes now and uh, we are going to stop and have a quick coffee and then finish bolting it in and then pretty much spend the afternoon uh, buttoning up uh, wires, transmission lines, put the starter motor in, uh, button up the torque converter bolts. We've got a lot to do. A lot to do so we will be working well through till uh, midnight tonight i dare say trying to get it all done uh, because i want to spend the day with my son tomorrow for his birthday as i said he's turning six tomorrow and that is a big day uh, in any kid's life so i want to be there making the most of it with him so we have made some headway i tell you what uh, i don't have my watch on me anymore i took it off because i kept uh, scratching it on the concrete however it is five minutes past 12. So what, two hours, and uh, let me jump under and show you uh, what I have achieved. So don't mind the dodgy uh, woodwork there. I ran out of uh, lift basically with the jack there. So had to create, basically give me a few more inches uh, to pump it up and uh, lift the gearbox up as well as working the jack at the back and working this engine crane here. So it has been a bit of a mission. I tell you what, I can, uh, I can do most things by myself. Uh, but it has been a bit of a battle to get this one done just because I've had to get out, reposition the jack, uh, get back in, uh, lift it up a bit, 
down at the front, up at the back, down at the back, up at the front. It's just a mixture of everything. And uh, I've even got the ratchet strap there, trying to twist the gearbox, as some will know, on these GU patrols. At the starter motor housing there, they've got a bit of an ear, a bit of a tag on the on the bell housing of the gearbox. So there can be a challenge uh, to get in uh, between the firewall, between the gearbox tunnel there. So anyway, uh, we lifted the motor up here at the back of the sump, lifted the motor up, and we lifted up, as I said, front and back of the hoists and the engine crane. And as you can see there, long story short, we've got some bolts in. Uh, awesome, awesome. So we're in line. They do have little um, aligning pins, uh, basically they're little dowels uh, to line up the gearbox. However, you do still have to line up an input shaft, uh, no bigger than my thumb, I suppose, uh, into the center of the flywheel there. So to pick up the torque converter. So yeah, we've done that. Anyway, it, uh, we're gonna keep pulling these bolts in now. Now you can use that as a bit of a trick. Uh, you can get a, a uh, ratchet or a ring spanner and you can sort of close that gap of the gearbox and the motor uh, by pulling in on the bolts. However, in saying that, if it's not in line properly, if it's not sitting on those dowels properly, or if it's miles out and uh, you know it's just not right, uh, you will end up snapping uh, parts of the bell housing. I've seen it happen before. I've never done it myself, but I have seen it happen before. You cannot rely on these bolts. Uh, the bell housing, it's only cast alloy. You cannot rely on it to be pulling all that pressure in. So make sure it's all right. Uh, but once it is, you are pretty much good to go. So we're going to jump under there, 14 mil a ratchet ring spanner. Uh, we also need a 17 uh, and a 19. And uh, I said we're going to jump in under under there. And uh, we're going to just pull those bolts in ever so slightly, working in a circular pattern. Uh, not not any one at just one time. You need to uh, basically do sort of, you know, a star pattern as you pull them in. And uh, basically, we will see if that gearbox is uh, fully aligned. I have no doubt it is. Uh, once it is, though, and those bolts are in, we can then put the cross member on, get rid of all these engine cranes and trolley jacks and uh, the bricks and the scissor jack there. So, And then uh, we can start doing the wiring and everything else that follows. So, you ripper. Okay, so that worked like a treat. Uh, we got in there, uh, lowered the gearbox down enough, and with about three or four uh, three-quarter inch extension bars, we managed to get right down the tunnel there. That's a long way down. Uh, right down the tunnel there to the bell housing bolts that you still can't even see. As I said, it's, uh, it's a fair length. We managed to get them and tighten them right up, so I have no qualm in saying uh, that this bell housing and gearbox uh, is now bolted securely to the motor and lined up exactly how it should be. Because let's face it, these things don't go in unless they line up properly. And uh, well, look at that. We have done it. Oh, I tell you what, I'm sweating too. It's hot, it is hot. I'm doing this all myself. And as I said, I am trying to uh, get through it as quickly as possible. Uh, trying to make sure that I spend as much time with my son there tomorrow for his birthday as possible. And look, I don't, uh, I don't rush jobs. Uh, you know, I always take pride in my work and I always do it properly. Because as my old man used to always say, what's the point of doing a job once uh, incorrectly and then having to do it all over again? Uh, so you do things properly the first time, you won't have to touch them again, or fingers crossed anyway. So look, uh, I'm going to have a bit of a break now. I am starving. I need some lunch. I know that is bolted in there securely. When we come back from lunch, we can start putting the cross member on, which is this fella around here, laying up against the wall. And as you can see there, the cross member uh, bolts two points to the bottom of your gearbox, and then up each side a tier chassis rail holding the back of your gearbox and transfer case in place. So that's what we're gonna do, have a break, have something to eat, and then uh, bingo bango, we will be back on the road in no time at all. Look at that, it's up there and it's in. What a beauty, oh, that is such a relief I tell you. And you know what, it's only taken me uh, solely by myself about two and a half hours to do that imagine if I had I had that gearbox eight days ago as promised Urgh.
Okay, okay. Uh, we have had some lunch now, and uh, we're back. We're back. So, what you didn't see either is we've had the father-in-law here for the last hour, uh, just assisting us uh, with a few items, and uh, especially those torque converter bolts. Uh, some will remember I did them, uh, undid them myself uh, using the rattle gun, breaking breaking that tension with the uh, the impact rattle gun. However, I did not want to go tightening them up that way uh, because fair chance you'll end up breaking one. Uh, it can happen. So. Basically, um, I had the father-in-law there with a long lever bar accessing the crank bolt inside the harmonic balancer there. I think it's about a 30 mil. And uh, he was there with a big lever bar turning over the motor uh, clockwise as I could get under there and basically expose, as the flywheel turned around, uh, it was exposing every one of those torque converter, torque converter bolts. A bit of a mouthful there. So look, once you pick up one and you do it up tight, I uh, don't ever do them up fully tight. I leave them just sort of nice and firm, uh, spin it around, rotate it around clockwise, get the next one, get the next one, and, and the last one, the fourth one. Once you've done that, you then spin it back around again. I know it's a little bit painful to do, uh, but you spin it back around again and you do them all up super tight. Uh, that's when you do, uh, do them up nice and tight. So never do them up tight to begin with because uh, you can actually pull the torque converter sideways and uh, making it that much harder to get the next ones in. So just uh, finger tight will do. And uh, now the father-in-law has ventured off, uh, back to go do another job at home. So I am here uh, by myself, and I'm just going to uh, spend the rest of the afternoon buttoning up uh, a few of these different items. We've got to put the, the kick-down shifter in. Uh, we've got to put the console in inside. Uh, we still have the starter motor, uh, exhaust, the two tail shafts, the sway bar and the side step to go on, uh, not to mention the handbrake assembly. And uh, then, then uh, I have to get myself down to an auto store, uh, use the partner's car. I need 11.8 litres of fully synthetic multi-transmission oil. Uh, that's going to be costly. I also need to buy a service transmission filter kit and do a service on this transmission. And then, uh, and then, once it's all done, once that's all topped up, uh, we will be good to turn that key. Uh, we have not run into any major uh, problems as yet, so nothing that we haven't been able to overcome. Anyway, uh, let's uh, let's keep going. Get this starter motor in. It's going to be the next job, and uh, we will show you a little bit more as we go. Okay, we have nearly got it beat. I tell you what, it's been a long day. Oh, let's have a walk outside. Oh, that's what daylight looks like. Hello. Not a very nice day, is it? It's just started to rain in the last half an hour, so sort of a good day to be in the shed, I guess. Uh, however, uh, we had two beautiful ripper days uh, prior to this, so would have been nice if uh, had I had this all finished then and uh, back out detecting. Anyway, anyway, let's not get into that. Um, as you can see, though, we're pretty much out. The jacks are all out. Uh, we have the torque converter bolts done up. We've got the starter motor in place. We've just double checked all the bell housing bolts. Uh, we've done the cross member up into position. Uh, we've done all the wiring. We changed over a gearbox mount. Uh, we have the exhaust there now in place. We've fitted up the catalytic converter. Uh, we've attached the handbrake cable. Uh, what else have we done? We have been busy, or I have been busy anyway. I've been flat out. So you can see the tail shaft there, the front drive shaft to the, uh, the front diff from the transfer case. We're going to put him on next. And uh, basically, we have only got, look, as I said, I'm going to finish this today. Uh, we've only got the rear tail shaft, the sway bar link, uh, a couple of bolts, not, not, a, not a hard job, and uh, the, the side step to put on. And then uh, this thing will be lowered down, pushed out into the rain, uh, I've got to put the radiator back in. That's not a big job. That's only a 10 minute job. Hook up the trans lines there. Hook a, uh, put the radiator in. And then, and then uh, I can start bleeding, start adding coolant and fluids and everything like that uh, that needs to be in a gearbox. And as I said, start bleeding all the air out of it. And then, hey presto, uh, we are good to go. I can't wait, oh, I can't wait. As I said, it's been a long day today. Been in here, uh, battling along. I have not even really seen daylight. I've just been going inside, making cups of coffee and returning to my little four wall uh, hidey hole here, the shed. Anyway, anyway, it's so good to have all this done. Oh, what a relief, what a relief. As I said, I had a lot of problems, a lot of hiccups, uh, even getting this gearbox here. The fact that I've got it in in six hours, uh, you know, I know that I would have had this up and running last week. 
But anyway, here we are Thursday this week. So anyway, as I said, we're gonna keep going, put this uh, front prop shaft in, front drive shaft. We're gonna work on the back drive shaft, the sway bar link and the side step, and uh, we should be ready to go. Righty all, uh, so that is the end of today and uh, what a long day too at that. We've been going since, as I said, uh, 10 o'clock this morning we started on this gearbox. It got dropped off and uh, we unloaded off the pallet, what have you. So about 10 a.m. this morning and it's just coming on 6 o'clock p.m. tonight. So what, uh, eight hours, eight hours solid and uh, single-handedly got this in. Uh, I will say with help from the father-in-law doing the torque converter bolts, uh, helping me uh, basically hold the, the crank bolt there, stopping the motor from turning over. However, as I said, I've been doing this all myself and uh, to be honest, it is sort of a one-man job from the floor. There's really not much room to swing a cat, let alone swing two people under there. So uh, basically, as I mentioned there before, we are finished underneath here. Uh, all I'm doing now is draining the existing oil that was in the pan uh, that was in the gearbox when it was sent to me today. And basically once that's drained, I am then going to remove the pan uh, and go down tomorrow and grab myself uh, a filter kit, uh, a service filter kit for that transmission, and also grab myself some more uh, Penrite full synthetic transmission uh, multi-sink oil. So. That is what I'm going to run in there, and uh, with a brand new transmission filter, we should not expect any problems. Uh, it's all part of the warranty too, it all needs to be done properly, uh, so not to avoid your warranty. So we're doing it properly. As I said before, there's no point doing something once uh, if it's going to fail, and you have to repeat and do it again. Uh, what a pain in the neck. Anyway, as I said, uh, tomorrow we will, uh, it is the finish of today, so tomorrow all we need to do is basically... Uh, drop this car down onto the ground on all four wheels and get it out of the uh, shed. Let's do that trans pan service kit quickly, probably take half an hour to do, and then we can uh, basically top it up with fluids, get it hot, bleed all the air out of it. Guess what? We're good to go. We can put it in reverse and back it out that driveway and uh, basically make a start and get back to detecting. You know, it's been uh, two weeks since I've been uh, out detecting. Uh, basically, as you can imagine, for someone that digs holes and is out detecting every day, if not every second day, I have been itching, absolutely itching, uh, to get out and also share my adventures with you guys too. So anyway, uh, we'll uh, pack up for tonight, go have some tea, go have a clean up, because once again, I'm filthy, and uh, we'll see you tomorrow, test day. Righty all, so welcome back there guys. Uh, it is the next day, as you can see. Uh, we've got daylight again. Uh, that's always handy, isn't it? Anyway, uh, as you can see too, we have been down to the auto parts store. I managed to pick up a few items that we need uh, to finish off our venture here, uh, finish off this job. So we've got the transmission service filter kit. We've got a new cork gasket, a new filter in there. We've got some degreaser and some uh, uh, throttle, bottle, throttle, throttle body cleaner, a carby cleaner. Uh, it's just really good, that stuff. It evaporates uh, super quick and dries up, so leaving no residue. Uh, we also have got uh, 8 litres, two 4 litre bottles of uh, Penrite multi-vehicle, fully synthetic auto trans fluid there. They were $53 a bottle, so yeah, as I said, quite expensive stuff. Anyway, uh, the best of the best is going in there. I don't want to take any risks and uh, make sure I do it all properly. So as I said, do a job once, uh, do it right. Repco coolant, uh, we only just went with the cheaper coolant this time, I was going to go with the Penrite, however, uh, this was on sale, 36 bucks a bottle, not too bad at all, so a little bit over 200 bucks there, just in uh, bits and pieces, and uh, as you can see, last night, our last job that I did, I went inside, had a shower, had my tea, uh, basically come back out until about 10 o'clock last night, I end up pulling the pan uh, off from underneath here, uh, this is the, the pan here, as you can see, and basically uh, inspecting the magnet and draining all the old oil out of it now I've just got this other pan here for comparison and you can see uh, the amount of basically metal filings and, and, and sludge and what have you that that uh, magnet has picked up in the old pan here uh, as opposed to the new one uh, off to, to this side here so quite incredible and look there is a little bit of sludge on this magnet uh, uh, that's that's pretty much what I expect you know that this gearbox got a little bit over 100,000 K's on it um, just shy of 150 so I do expect uh, to have that little bit of build up of, uh, of sludge there. Nothing too, uh, nothing too major to worry about, uh, as opposed to, you know, look at this. Crazy, crazy. That is just, yeah, amazing. 
amazing. We, let's <laughs> keep saying, we did some catastrophic damage in there. Anyway, so we're going to get these parts in. We still need to clean up the pan uh, with the, the carby cleaner, what have you there. Uh, we need to put the cork gasket on and bolt the filter in place. Let me take it here, under here, and I'll show you, look, uh, what we've got going on. So basically the filter uh, bolts up into this little hole here. Uh, and it slots into there and there's a few there's a series of four 10 mil bolts that basically bolt uh, that filter up into place and then it's just a matter of putting all uh, the little 10 mil bolts back on around the pan and don't over tighten them because they are a cork gasket and being a cork gasket uh, you can easily split them in half so basically uh, just hand tight doing a, a star pattern hand tight all the way around uh, nip them up and then go back around and just do one by one uh, just nice and firm so not exactly sure of the torque spec requirement for the pan bolts here however um, just firm just firm that's what i like to do them anyway uh, we are going to make a start on this clean this pan as i said put the parts in and uh, then we can back it out turn that key and uh, hopefully go for a test drive see how we go okay so we've just been outside we've cleaned up the uh, the pan ready to put back on uh, we're just placing the, uh, the uh, cork gasket in place. I just wanted to show you too, this magnet, uh, it's important to clean these up thoroughly before placing them back in. So we're just uh, hitting with the degreaser, ran it over with the cold water, gave them a scrub and then come back in with some throttle body carby cleaner because uh, it dries super quick and leaves no residue. I gave it a hit with that stuff and let it dry. Anyway, one thing I was going to show you too quickly just before we uh, set this guy in up underneath is this little o-ring now it's only a little rubber o-ring as you can see these o-rings are very very important that they go in place properly and not only that it's most important that you take the old one out so as you remove the old transmission oil filter you must make sure that up in the valve body there the old o-ring rubber o-ring comes out with the old filter before putting the new one in because uh, obviously you know it's important to have one in there but you go having two in there and basically it probably won't seal at all it'll probably push it out and not uh, not allow it to sit in place where it should be so anyway we're going to get this underneath as said put the cork gasket back on and uh, get it filled up with oil and then make a start on turning that key Alrighty, uh, we have done it. Uh, as you can see, the car is now down off the jack stands. Uh, all the tools are packed away. And uh, we have also pumped a good 10 litres of transmission fluid uh, into the car there. So I think we are good to go. We've put a little bit of coolant in the radiator here too. However, that's not really too necessary to worry about too much right now. Once we back it out of the uh, shed here, we'll top the rest up with water because uh, we've just put the concentrate coolant in there at the moment. So it probably requires a couple of litres of water now. About a 50-50-50 mix I like to run. Anyway, so as I said, uh, I think... Um, Fingers crossed, I think we are good to go. I said 10 litres of oil down the neck there of the uh, dipstick filler tube. So uh, let's do what we've all been wanting to do for the last two weeks. And let's start this car up and let's see if it runs. And let's see if we've got gears. Wouldn't that be a bonus? Oh, I said this is a second-hand gearbox, so there is no 100% official guarantees. You know, I can't say it's brand new. Uh, anyway, so let's see what we've got. Uh, I really, you know, I said fingers crossed uh, we have no issues here. So, ready? Fingers crossed, everybody. Well, that's a good start. That is a good start. We'll just jump out quickly, check for any leaks underneath. Because uh, as the motor starts, it will obviously gain pressure. And as the motor gains pressure, there might be some leaks underneath so it looks good so far there's nothing squirting out or leaking right now uh, for the big moment let's see if we've got reverse let's see if we can pick up a gear here we go oh <laughs> straight, straight away straight away wow uh, let's go into drive shall we oh look at that look at that isn't that bloody perfect let's go forward a bit wow reverse that's uh engaging very very nicely very nicely we're just going to try and back it out of the shed here with the bonnet open still oh try not to hit the side of the bricks and once we get it out of the shed here look at that we're driving oh that's awesome that is awesome two weeks it's been since i've been driving this car but uh, once we get out of the shed here we can uh, 
really check out for any leaks underneath and uh, we can also top that radiator up uh, before it overheats you know this, it'll probably run for five ten minutes before it even starts getting hot however we do need to top it up um, as I said with a bit of that water so wow wow let's go through that again reverse oh straight away neutral and ready drive whoa it's got a lot of uh, a lot of drive there uh, very good that is a great uh, a big relief off my shoulders right there you know the fact that it's running working uh, it's a good gearbox that is amazing absolutely amazing and uh, as I said I'm so fortunate I'm able to do all this work myself because you could just imagine uh, what it would have cost me you know 1600 bucks plus uh, fluids what have you you know I'm up at nearly two grand now uh, just shy for this rebuild however could you imagine uh, what it would have cost me labor on top probably another two grand or more at that so wow fascinating stuff the big test will now be putting it in drive sending it out the road and doing 100 kilometers an hour and seeing if it's uh, you know seeing what it's like basically seeing how it changes gear and uh, also making sure that overdrive engages properly so oh amazing amazing uh, what a ripper what a ripper anyway uh, we best put some water in because that uh, temperature is heating up quick quicker than what I thought Rightio, so we've had some lunch now and uh, we've got all the fluids topped up, everything is good to go. Uh, we've just moved some vehicles around, cleared the driveway out and guess what? It is test driving time. Uh, so we're going to get out the road, test drive it, make sure all the gears work properly and uh, show you a look as we go. Okay, so I shouldn't probably be doing this uh, but here we are in drive, uh, starting from a stop start. Let's go. That does change good, that's perfect. First, second, third, spot on, spot on. I tell you what, we can fix stuff. Uh, we fix this good, we can do stuff. Anyway, uh, that is about it. We do need to take it out for a proper test drive out on the highway doing 100 kilometers an hour, making sure that overdrive is engaging properly. However, uh, that is a wrap up, that is beautiful. We will be back out hunting again, detecting next week. I will be making sure I be ring, uh, I make contact with a landowner this week and uh, setting up a site for me to attend uh, next week and detect. So stay tuned guys, uh, we will see you next week and uh, I really hope you enjoyed. It's not one of my normal videos I know, uh, however nice to show you uh, basically uh, what we've achieved here uh, over the two week period, getting the old one out and the new one in. So anyway, happy hunting guys and uh, we will see you next time. Cheers. Thank you.